All righty. Let's jump right into it then. Let's start with when OU's defense and West Virginia's offense are on the field. What are you watching for, Ted? What type of challenge is West Virginia's offense bring? I got to tell you, I as I go through my notes from watching their offense, we should we should destroy this offense. Now, I I say we. A good defense should destroy this offense. I don't think they're good, very good on the line of scrimmage. I think their running game is a kind of a try and hit you where you're not type of deal. I, I, I don't see them blowing people off the ball. Um, I don't think it's overly creative. I mean, it's all kind of the same stuff that, that we've seen inside zone, a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of G counter and, uh, you know, some down and around stuff on the perimeter. Uh, they do some weird things out of split zone. They like, they run it. The back action is opposite of what you typically see, which is interesting, but it doesn't change any of the fits really at all. Um, it's just, you'll get a little bit of a, like a tackle power against the three man surface. You'll get some traditional one back power against a, a four man surface. A, I don't know. It's interesting watching that Iowa state game. You know, I I think that defensively we'll probably copy quite a few things that Iowa State did. Um, you know, for Iowa State's standards, they ran a lot of four man front, ran a lot of four man front, and ran a lot of um, like just a over with a pirate on it. So um, and that that helped them quite a bit, kind of really eliminate a lot of those inside running lanes, force everything to the perimeter, and they did a really good job with it. Passing game, since they can't get the run going, the passing game is is it's it's not great. You know, you'll get a little bit of tunnel screen. Uh, you'll get some of the the old staples from your from your air raid stuff, snag route, spacing route. Um, you'll get three level. You'll you know they'll condense formations and run some sprint pass stuff or boot action stuff with JT Daniels. Not a whole lot. I, I honestly think that this offense is just flat out not very good. I mean, I, mean, I know they've had some explosive games and, and they've been able to hit on some stuff. And, you know, it's just – it's hard to – it's hard to, to say, like, what we're going to look like against it because we've been so wildly inconsistent in our own right on defense. So – uh, if if we have a good game, if we play smart football, we should be able to to hold West Virginia to a very very limited amount of points. But you know, it's it's hard to know. Like if you can't line up right, and you make mental mistakes, and you let teams off the hook with penalties, and uh, you anything can happen. But I I personally feel like this is a very weak offense that we should be able to have a lot of success against. I I hear you, man. I but with the way that the defense has played, like <laughs> I, I got doubts. And and this, I know a, a few things I've seen watching them on tape offensively. Number one, if JT Daniels can be comfortable in the pocket, that dude can sling it. Mm -hmm. He's got a big arm. There's no doubt about that. He has he has put some of the most impressive throws I've seen this season in college football on tape where you're just like, damn, how did he fit it there? I mean, he is, if he's comfortable, he's a confident dude. He will let that thing fly. And then they got size and athleticism at wide receiver. Prather, uh, Ford Wheaton. I think Bryce Ford Wheaton is a really good player. Now he's had, he's had some issues with drops this year. But when you think about the body types, we've got at corner. E even though I, the, the past defense was better right last week against Baylor. Like I, I thought that was a step in the right direction, but we don't have the biggest guys at corner. We don't have a ton of length, right? They got big wide receivers and JT Daniels Hilt. He has no problem saying, all right, guys, here you go. Go get it. So we're going to have to win those competitive situations. And then Zach Frazier, their center. He's the best center in the big 12. I really like watching him. He's fun to watch. And that'll be a nice challenge for the interior of the defensive line. 
I don't think the guys around him are very talented. I think they're particularly weak at tackle. Uh, Wyatt Milam was a highly recruited guy. I just, I don't see it right now. Their left tackle, I just don't see it from him so far. But yeah, I, I, I want to think the defense is going to come out and play well, man. But I just, I mean, I there's no way I can say that. I know. Now I wanted to ask you about. The, I'm sure you watched the Iowa State game. What? Is it me or is some of the footwork with their offensive line just like really weird? Like they, it's like they shuffle on some inside zone stuff. Like it's two by two, it. they've got you split out. It's just these weird little shuffle steps. Yeah, some of it. And I don't know why. Like, you know me. Let's come off the ball, please. Please. Like, what's it matter? Like, what are you doing with that? Like, I, I don't know. I it's don't weird. know. It's like, oh, we're going to, we're going to all move uniformly a couple of steps and then go. It's like, why are we? What? Why? Like, yeah. it, it, ta- that I am, and this is something that does not get talked about a lot when it comes to offensive line play. Time is not your friend on the offensive line. Like in the run game, let's get going. Yeah. The, the, the more time we take to get going, that gives the defense more time to react. Like let's get going guys. So yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. It's one of those. I, I wrote it down in my notes. All it says is, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like going through yeah. plays. Oh, that's weird. That's dumb. So, yeah. yeah, but I do think, I mean, they're not just a, they're not a horrible group up front. And with the way that our defensive line has been playing, you know, Oklahoma's defensive line, they better, they better figure it out, man. Yeah. Or, well, and, and here's the thing, you know, from what I see from them, it, it's not all that alarming, but we just got, just got it handed to us by Baylor. So they're going to copy some of the stuff we saw from Baylor. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that if we get to some short yardage goal line situations, they're going to get in some of that similar 22 or 23 personnel and motion and see if we have figured out how to adjust to it or not. Um, they're going to get, it's really easy because they already do a lot of it anyways with some down and around stuff and, you know, they'll pull quite a bit. We're going to get bunch and we're going to get inside zone and we're going to get crack toss out of it. Like, I don't know how much they're going to live in it, but we're going to see it. Question for you. Do you think if we get bunch Oklahoma's defensive end and the inside backer to that side, do you think they'll maybe take a peek and say, Hey, this guy may come knock me in the side of my head? No. Okay. No they won't unless they're told to from a second level player. Typically, my experience with those guys, blinders, 100% blinders, which I kind of understand, right? It's a it's a different world. You're worried about the guy you're lined up on. It's up to players at the second and third level to, you know, shed some light on the situation, what's happening formation-wise. So, and that hasn't been a, a strength of ours so far. So, I would probably say – for the first four or five times they run it, no. I hope you're wrong, man. <laughs> I, hope, I, I do think that West Virginia is going to look at some of the Baylor stuff, and, and they've ran they've ran some outside zone, some stretch, not a ton of it, but they may look at you know the pin pull stuff, down and round stuff you're talking about in the outside zone success. They may implement more of that. I. I can't imagine they won't right well, and they'll, they'll at least test us on it to see if yeah see probably what early like. yep so i mean i i don't know i i feel like the way oklahoma's defense is going to play is like the great mystery in this game i, I don't know the, because just just hearing some of those guys talk the confidence is gone man it's it's gone it's bad yeah. the vibe the vibes the vibes are low, bad vibes, Ted. So I, I mean, it's really hard to think that they're going to go out and play well defensively. I just, I wish it wasn't the case, but that's just how I feel right now, man. I know. Well, and it's, it's how I feel. It's how everyone feels. If at this point, if you get really good play or just, good play defensively it's like it's like a built-in bonus 
It's not expected. If it happens, it's like, hey, okay, nice. But I totally, I totally think that this is a game where they should be able to to have a lot of success. I mean, you're right. There's some there's some matchups out there on the outside with some of the wide receivers that you don't feel great about. But you know, I think that all still comes back to like down in distance. If you're not sure if it's coming and you're not sure what's coming, those matchups are really difficult. If down a distance and field position has dictated what they have to do and you are, um, you know, you've got it boiled down to a handful of routes that you're going to get, you know, the pass is coming and they're one dimensional, then it's way easier to defend those guys. So that to me is, that's going to be the game like always. Be good on early downs. Don't penalize yourself. Win the field position battle with special teams. Don't kick it through the end zone whenever you've got opportunities for a pooch situation. And I think we should be able to play good defense. Whether or not that actually happens, I wish I knew. Line up exactly where you're supposed to be. That'll... Yeah, it's it's interesting. A step one way or the other actually actually means a lot. And take it far from a team that is ranked in the triple digits to say that alignment isn't that deep. Just kind of how I feel on that that whole situation alignment mm -hmm. the first thing the the alignment assignment snap count there's a reason alignment's first well here's the thing to me and what we're referring to is like the you know stutzman's little quote on the podcast on the prairie and you know here's the thing like i don't know the whole context of that situation but you know he was just talking about how venables was yelling at him and you know, he's thinking in his mind, like, you moved me over one step in my alignment. It ain't that deep. I, it's a total slap in the face to your coach and to the whole program whenever the, the whole mantra that it's been built on since Coach Venable showed up is what? Everything matters. And if you don't think alignment moving one step one way or the other matters, then no one else does. Like, if 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 close is good enough for you, then it's going to be good enough for everyone on the team. And it's going to be good enough to get your ass kicked by everyone else that is locked into the details. This isn't high school football. Every single alignment matters. It may not matter on a given play, right, That that you were one step off, but when it's fourth and one and the game is on the line, you think it matters then? Let's go to the film and look at it. Yeah, it matters. And if all 11 guys think that close is good enough, guess what? You end up being triple-digit ranked on defense. That's what's so frustrating to me is that right, given the position of where we are right now, like, it hasn't been rammed home yet that okay, maybe it does matter that I'm exactly dialed into every alignment and every detail. That's that's the frustrating part with it. Anything else? Nope. All right, let's talk OU's offense and West Virginia's defense, uh, what we're watching for. West Virginia's defense is not good against the run. They're horrible against the pass. Uh, bad at getting off the field on third down, even worse at getting off the field on fourth down. Uh, they're bad in red zone defense. Uh, they've done a really bad job of forcing turnovers. Other than that, they're really good. Are you talking about West Virginia's defense? That's West Virginia's defense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not our, not, not the Oklahoma defense, the, the West Virginia. So that, I mean, they're, and they've been good on defense the last couple of seasons. They are not good on defense uh, this year. And I think it has everything to do with, them having a weak back seven, some inexperience back there. But when it comes to things to watch for, Oklahoma's offensive line has played better, right? They're getting better. And they're they're playing, they're playing at a high level heading into this game. And as bad as West Virginia's defense has been statistically, it's going to be a battle in the interior. I'm telling you right now. Number 95, Jordan Jefferson. Number 55, Dante Stills. Those are two good players. 
those are two of the best interior guys in this conference. Uh, and, and they they play hard. They play with violence. They use their hands well. So OU's offensive line's going to have to play well against those two guys in particular because they're physical. They got length. Like They do a good job of disengaging off of blocks. So first and foremost, like you got to take care of 95 and 55. You, if you're double teaming, you double teaming them, you can't get split. They do a good job of splitting double teams. They have to eliminate 95 and 55 from the game. I, and, and I assume that's a big part of what OU's offense wants to get accomplished, especially in the run game is take care of 95 and 55. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those guys are big. Uh, 95. I, I like him a lot. I think Me he too. is a, a really, really good player. It's tough. Just, you know, it's hard to get movement on those guys, as you pointed out. Um, uh, so, I, you know, I like the challenge. And I'm with you. I feel like the offensive line has played better. And I, we need to, we need to take advantage of that. Like if you can, if you can get those two guys blocked up, I think, you know, at backer, I think West Virginia is very, very suspect. I think a lot of our, we should have a big day run in the football. I mean, that's, that's really what it boils down to. And if, if you can be solid on, on those two guys, then I think it should open up the whole offense. Yeah. And, and speaking of the run of the football, it's funny. I think there are there are two completely opposite approaches you can take when it comes to running the rock against West Virginia, and I hope that Jeff Levy dials them both up. I think you can spread them out. I mean, spread them out, go five wide, whether that's, you know, you're probably putting Braden Willis in like a slot position if you're doing that right. But if you spread them out, and a lot of teams have done it. Texas did it. Uh, TCU did it and, and ran the ball really well but they play a light box like almost it's sometimes it's five. Sometimes you got that overhang players kind of, so kind of a five and a half man box. And really you can go with some simple running concepts, just like a, a five man zone or a five man man scheme, where maybe you're folding one guy and there's just been some gaping holes when some people have spread them out in the run game. And I, I mean, TCU, they popped a couple of long touchdown runs doing some of this stuff. I I can't imagine that OU, even though I know it's a, it's been a very heavy 11 personnel attack, like you can still be in your 11 personnel and spread them out. And you you got to you got to do some of that if you're Jeff Levy because they've been they've given up some gash. I mean, they've been gashed in some of those runs. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, the RPO stuff has been strong for us at times as well and if you can spread them out and start having some success in the running game, then they've got the the overhang players have to start getting a little bit more weary and leaning towards the box and leaning towards the run. And, and just inevitably that's how the, the poker game or the chess match rather happens. And you just start to pull it and hit some of those, those RPO slants in behind them and, and take advantage of that as well. So yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, and I also think, you know, kind of complete opposite thought process. I think you can get in some 12 and just mash them. Right? And we've seen some 12 personnel with Braden Willis and Daniel Parker both on the field, and we've seen some good stuff out of it. So I, I really think you could get into some of that and and really get after them. The reason I like it, the reason I would like to see some of it is as I watch it as an offensive lineman, it gets them to a four-down structure. It forces one of their safeties to come be in the run fit and the angles for an offensive line. They, I just really like the angles, whether it's zone, the gap scheme stuff with the double teams. I like the angles it creates for an offensive line. And anytime you want to bring a safety into the core and make him tackle Ted, I'm I'm all for it. So yep. I I would I I'm hoping we get to see some of that. And then because out of it, it's also you know, with their with their issues in the secondary, I mean, you can you can max protect out of that twelve personnel stuff. Throw some shots down the field, and you know, try to try to hurt them that way. I we may see all of this, but that's just a couple of things that you know have really stood out to me. I think you can spread them out and run it, and I think you can get in twelve and run it, and then take some shots. I yeah, we'll see though. Yeah, and 
You know, the other good thing about it, uh, you mentioned bringing a safety in the box and forcing them into the fit. Here's the other thing. If a safety's into the box, you can make the corner in the box with a crack, right? Whenever you crack that safety, now it's you've put it all the way out to the corner, which are the worst tacklers on the team typically. And um, that starts to really open up some of the the play action stuff as well where it looks like you're running crack stuff but ends up being g pass or something where you're running over routes it's it can be uh really good against some defenses and then one more thing to watch uh, i know that a lot of people have been wanting some more intermediate passing game right um uh, in, in this offense from levy but man they should it should be bombs away against this team. I do not think they run very well in the back end. And, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of snaps on tape of them struggling to keep up, whether it's deep posts, uh, deep over routes. I I just I don't think they run particularly well. And it, they have not done a good job of generating a pass rush. Really? I mean, guys, you know, they, they've been close. Stills is, Stills is a good pass rusher, but... If Dylan Gabriel can have time and let those deeper routes develop, I mean, whether it's Mims or, or Farouk, like those guys should be able to run by uh, 11 and 24 in particular, seeing them struggle many times. So I, you, you got to connect on some of those, right? Yep. You, that, I think that can, that can really open some things up, but you got to test them because I don't, I don't think the speed, is is there in the back end of that West Virginia defense? Well, uh, that should work well because I've still yet to see anyone cover Marvin Mims on a deep ball. I, he's always open. If we can just uh, connect on those with some higher percentage, then I really like it. We'll see.